Hey guys, how's it going today? Thought I'd do a quick unboxing vid here of a new plane I actually ordered. Uh, lately, the, my unboxing vids have been for friends of mine, so this one I'm the proud owner. Uh, this is the Free Wing uh, T33. Uh, this is the European camo version, plug and play. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting this thing together and getting it out this weekend for a maiden flight. Heard nothing but good things about these. These just came out. It's the 80 millimeter. Um, so let's get out of the box and have a look at what we got here. Okay, so right off the bat, I can already see that uh, the box arrived without any damage. Free wing, or should I say, Motion RC, where I bought this from. Always does a good job of packing these up. Alrighty, so just getting the box open. I'm going to spin this around so you can see what's in here. So here we go. So this is a T33 shooting star. Let's uh, go ahead and remove the inner box from the outer box here. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be anything we need in there. Alright, so let me gently flip this over. Get this box out of the way. Okay, so this is the box inside the protective box. I got just a little puncture ding there. Nothing to be worried about. Little uh, little compression on that side. Looks pretty good actually. So I'm going to cut the tape and open her up. So this has got the new 80 millimeter in runner motor power setup with the uh, nine blade fan. I'm excited about that because uh, I understand it's a very efficient setup for great performance. Okay. All right. So tilting this over so you can see. So right up top we got the instruction manual. I set that right there. We've got the, uh, the chase wire to pull our cables for the uh, tail feathers. Gonna stick that right there. All right, so looking good so far. Everything looks to be very well protected. Here's one of the uh, wing tanks, fuel tanks. And you know, I went with this camo version because I really like the orange. The silver version has the red. Um, I really like this camo and orange. I think that's going to be real easy to see. So that looks good. Fantastic paint. Um, this paint looks like nothing is chipping at all. Looks really nicely done. Um, of course, these screw in here. So I'm going to set this aside and keep pulling things out of the box here. Anything else here? Nope, we're ready to take out the main wing. So let's uh, do that. Oh, I do have my hardware bag right here. So as you can see, we've got, um, we've got the ribbon cables for connecting the, the wing to the fuselage for the ailerons and the flaps. Uh, we've got all of our control surface hardware there. So that's in that bag. Okay, setting the foam aside, and the first thing that's big that's coming out is this main wing here. 
and it is of course sealed in plastic. I already like what I'm seeing. Let me uh, cut this open and pull it out so you can have a look at it. Okay, main wing coming out of the plastic. All right, I got the split flaps. I'm going to pull the foam, protective foam out of the split flaps. Okay, so having a look at this beautiful wing here. Paint looks fantastic. The foam looks incredible. I do have one little ding here, but uh, nothing to get excited about. I don't know if you can see that right there, but just one little compression spot there. No big deal. All right, flipping it over. So this tape, which is covering the aileron servo wires and the flap servo wires is coming up a little bit, but all in all, it is, uh, it seems to be in there pretty good. Uh, Nylon hinges throughout, checking that, resistance is good, I'm going to be pulling on these a little bit, making sure they're all in there firm, looks good to me. All servos pre-installed, we've got uh, landing gear, retracts look good. So all in all pretty much looking pretty good here. I like this color. I like this scheme a lot. So this is the main wing. I'm going to set it down right over here. And we are ready to move on to the next layer. Let's see if we've got some tape. Tape here has got to be cut. Yep, we do. Tape is on the far ends here, so we'll cut that. I could see the styrofoam here had gotten broken in shipping and that's probably maybe what caused that little ding again not a big deal and uh, not much you can do about that that's just part of what happens with FedEx okay so we got some more goodies here as we look this is the rest of the plane here I'm going to start by pulling out the other Wing tip, fuel tank, again the uh, paint and finish on it looks really good. I really dig the orange. I think that's going to look fantastic. Setting that aside. All right, horizontal stabilizer with our elevator. We have got independent servos for each elevator. Go ahead and open that up. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm impressed so far with this paint. Um, I like the triple nylon hinges on each control surface. Feels really good and solid. I mean, just really nice. I know I say this every time I do an unboxing, but they just keep getting better and better. Um, really like what I'm seeing here. Um, I like these plates that screw in and hold the servos in. The, uh, I'm gonna check each one of these, but it looks like these servos are firmly in place so not going anywhere that's nice and of course it's gonna make it easier if you ever have to replace them so there it is a horizontal stabilizer and all the paint finish looks really nice so I'm gonna set that aside okay vertical stab in the rudder here 
I'm glad I went with this camo version because it looks really nice. Okay, vertical stab and the rudder. Uh, we've got two nylon hinges for the rudder there. And I'm tugging on it. It's uh, solid, very solid. Um, the decals, or the water slide decals, they look really nice. They were put on correctly, it looks like. Um, absolutely no problem with any of the foam on any of this. Paint looks really good. I don't have any chipping which has been reported on some of the silver uh, absolutely none of that happening here with these colors um, nice real flat color on both the olive drab and the light gray looks fantastic so servos obviously pre-installed looking good so we'll set this aside and this is what you've been waiting for i know i have and that is this beautiful fuselage. Here we go. Alrighty, let me cut that open. Here's the scissors. Okay, I'm removing it from the plastic. Here we go. Okay, there it is. There's the fuselage. And um, looking at this battery compartment, it is a uh, pretty good size. Let's uh, check the width on that. I know a lot of people are going to fly 5,000s in here, so um, the entrance width of that is right at just under three inches about two and seven eighths inch so i've got a really thick pack here here's your standard 6l5000 that's going to just walk in there no problem cakewalk what i was concerned about is i've got a really wide pack that i like here that i want to try out and let's see if that's going to go in problem. That is a two and a half inch wide pack and it goes in there beautifully. Almost like it was made for each other. So real happy about that. I was concerned about that not fitting in because that is a wide pack. Quite a bit wider than the standard 5000. So that fits in no problem at all. Both of these. So if you're flying a regular 5000 pack it's going to fit in there fine. This is a really wide 5,000 pack, and it fits in there flat. No problem at all. So you're going to be flying 4,000s and 6,000s without any issue whatsoever. Okay, so EC5's on the connector. Um, we got the little blue box in there, which is going to make... Wiring look really nice, no Y adapters in there. We're going to be able to uh, connect all of our ailerons, elevators, uh, everything up to the blue box. Um, let's have a look at this power system. So, yeah, the ducting looks fantastic. We got the free wing 100 amp in there. Um, so, this is the power system that's the nine blade. Let's have a look at that. Looks really good. Yeah, I can't wait to run that. Uh, the nine blade on the version two Mirage sounds fantastic. So this is gonna be the same thing. Um, maybe even a little faster. So all the foam looks pretty good here. I'm checking it out, seeing if there's anything that I should be concerned about. 
and there is not the paint no chipping nothing no wrinkles in the foam this camo paint scheme the paint may be sticking a little better than the silvers because um, it looks good looks real good so that's the fuselage it's big and it's beautiful so we're gonna set that right over here and last thing to come out is the cockpit with my pilots and it is the trainer so we got both of these guys in here and it looks good it looks real nice um, there's a fair amount of black mostly gray in here so I might cut a hole in two or two in here to help it breathe to keep that gator skin from happening if this gets set out in sun sometimes if there's no holes in here it'll tend to uh, gator up pretty quick on you but this looks good let's see how it goes in here We've got the tongue up front nice firm fit with the spring latch in the back very nice Looking good. Retract doors look good. Uh, there is a hole in here up front that allows some air to get through and just kind of sweep over the battery and the electronics to keep things cool in there, so that's good. Well, that's it. Not much to it. What is it, five, six pieces? It's going to be an easy build. Um, it's going to be just screwing on the tail feathers in the back, screwing on the wing up front screwing on our uh, tip tanks, our fuel tanks on the side, and that's going to be it. So I'm going to put it together, and I'm going to try to get out to the field this weekend for a maiden. I'm expecting this to fly fantastic. Um, I've flown uh, both stabilizers and regular servos in these type of planes, and I'm just going to go with a standard six-channel regular servo, uh, servo, regular receiver in here. Um, I'm not going to even bother with any type of, uh, you know, stabilization for this airplane. I think it's going to fly fine without it. So um, I'm going to go that route with it, and I will post a video this weekend of the Maiden. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Okay, guys. Uh, so some, let me stand over here. Some final thoughts and a few quick tips for you. Um, it did go together pretty quick, really quick as a matter of fact. Uh, maybe hour and a half for me. Uh, might be a lot less for some of you guys, more for others. Uh, no rush on it. I like to uh, inspect everything as I go. I like to take an in-depth look at the power system. Um, I actually pulled this one out to look at it, make sure all the all the three um, ESC cables were tight on there, which they were. Um, everything on here really was put together really well. Um, couple quick tips on here. First off, do not freak out if your landing gear, if the retracts don't work straight away. Um, using the blue box, which I've done, there is a three to five second delay on that. Um, I almost went into full head scratching mode and started ripping everything apart. And I remembered that somebody online had discovered before I did. Um, so your radio will be set up properly. Um, everything will be fine. Uh, but you'll just start flipping away at the gear switch and nothing will be happening. So there's a three to five second delay using my spectrum equipment on here. It's probably the same for Futaba and everything. Um, so if you flip your gear switch, don't panic. Get a cup of coffee. <laughs> Trust me, the gear is going to work. Um, so be aware of that. Tip number one. Uh, tip number two, um, these uh, wing tanks here are held on by screws. Um, and they're a little tough to get the screws in when I put the tanks on. Uh, you probably want to start your screws in first, get them all the way through the holes, um, hold it up vertical and send them through vertically, and then uh, put them on with your screws already uh, sent through the holes. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be really trying to search for the hole with it already put on and going in horizontally with the screws. So 
hopefully that will save you a few minutes doing it that way. Um, I really, really like um, the control surface hardware. Um, you know, the, the ball ends, the cups work really well. And when they're set up properly, they're very low resistance, easy on the servos. And I think the clasp mechanism is uh, working really well. Now, you'll notice on the cup end, the black end that goes on the ball, if you look closely, and my eyes are going bad, if yours are as well, on one side, there are three dots. Uh, on the other side, there are not. When I mean dots, uh, they're like uh, just little kind of holes uh, from the molding. That side with the three dots, in my opinion, should be pointing out away from the cup, uh, away from the ball. Uh, because there seems to be a chamfer on the, on the opposite side of that. So um, the, the chamfer end should go onto the ball to make it easy to go on so that the cup rides on the outside diameter, the most outside diameter of the ball. And I find that the, on one side there are not three little marks. On one side there are the side with the three little marks. Um, I might actually have an extra one here to show you. Uh, here we go. So you, you can't see this, but on one side, there are not three little marks. On this side, there are three little holes from the molding. This side does not have the chamfer on that ID, and I believe that should be on the outside of the ball. This side has a small little chamfer on that ID. I believe that is the side that should go onto the ball. Um, and if you just squeeze it on there, it snaps on easy. It rides on the outside diameter of the ball. You don't want to go too far or obviously not far enough because you're not going to have that smooth, uh, low resistance, low friction connection. So hopefully that helps as well. If I'm wrong on that, let me know in the comments, but as close as I can tell, that is the way they should go on. Um, everything went together really smooth. Um, I do like the blue box in here. Um, it really makes it nice for cable management, keeps things clean. Um, you know, I think it works well. Um, this is the first plane I'm going to have that actually has the blue box. So um, I like it. I'm going to use it. Um, I've got my receiver in the back here. Tons of room for a battery up here. Tons of room. Even my fatty... 5,000's fitting in there. Um, if anything, this um, power lead from the ESC might be a little bit long. Look how far that goes. Um, I'm not going to bother shorten it up, but um, I don't know what they were thinking on that. It really, you know, it's, it's probably six inches longer than it needs to be. But, um, you know... I guess some guys might shorten it up. Me, I'm just going to fold it back and go out and fly. So, uh, this was definitely not a built-on Friday airplane. Everything was sweet, fit smoothly. Um, I did not find anything that needed really my attention on here outside the normal build. Uh, so be aware of the gears taking a, a little bit of a delay. Um, and... Um, Make sure you, you just go through and check everything on yours. Um, I was not able to use 100% uh, on my flaps. It was too much for the way these are set up. I'm running like 70, 0, and 70 for my, in my flap settings. Um, if you guys are running Spectrum gear, it's probably going to be pretty similar for you as well. Um, and the only thing I had to reverse using Spectre Receiver was my ailerons. Everything else was going the right direction. Um, the only thing left for me to do is put on my little antennas here, little guys here that get glued on. Um, so I'll do that and that'll finish things up. Uh, lastly, I'll just point out that when you open up these instructions, there's a little addendum here having to do with the blue box. Um, if you choose to use the blue box, and I hope you do, uh, you're going to be using the page 3 on here, which is the MCB-E. And what you want to do is you just want to turn this thing about 90 degrees, and that'll make it look exactly like it does in the plane. There wasn't much to hook up. 
I mean, they give you the, the wires right here that goes into your receiver. Everything else was pretty much hooked up. All you had to do was bring in your two elevator servo wires, your rudder, and that was it. Uh, you just had to plug in three and plug these into your receiver and it works. So, at any rate, um, I'm going to get on flight this weekend and I'll get a video of that as well. Um, I don't know. I love this color. I love the way this looks. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but I really like it. And uh, I think this orange is going to be real nice for orientation. Oh, by the way, uh, my last tip was going to be if you run up your motor on here and you feel like it's a little out of balance, it's real easy just to loosen the the spinner and give it a quarter turn, tighten it up, um, and try it again and get it running smoother. This one was absolutely smooth through the whole throttle range. I mean, just real smooth. As a matter of fact, um, I'll plug it in for you, let you hear it. I was, uh, you know, I've had a couple of these from time to time that, you know, are a little noisy. And you just give that spinner quarter turn and you run it up again, you do it another quarter turn and then you get that sweet spot where it sounds much better. Um, didn't have to do it here at all. Okay, so have a listen to this. I've got my hand on here, zero vibration at all. Very smooth, sounds fantastic. So this nine blade setup may be my new favorite. Um, so check out the gear, okay? Gear switch. Nothing's happening. I'm about to freak out. And now they finally got me. Okay, that almost got me. I almost started tearing things apart. So listen, switch, delay, and then it comes out. So be patient with it. You haven't done anything wrong. Um, it's just got a delay. The blue box has a delay in there. I think that's for, you know, some of these planes have sequenced doors. Um, not this one. Um, delay doesn't bother me. Shouldn't bother you as well. But at any rate, thanks for watching. Let me unplug my battery. I am very happy with this model. Love the way it looks. And I think I'm going to love the way it flies. Thanks for watching.